Hi, I'm Willie, and Willie, Willie, what? Willie, Willie, Willie. Just a second. Willie, Willie, Willie. Bobo, what is it? I'm trying to film. Let me out. Why? I got, I got something to say. What do you want to say, Bobo? Let me out. Let me out. Let me out. Okay, okay, just a second. It's time. It's time for another exciting episode of the Da 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 Burnin' Bitch! Is that it, Bobo? Yes, that's all I wanted to say. Thank God I can get back to filming now. <laughs> Thank you, Bobo. <laughs> anyway, I'm Willie, and today I am going to show you how to use a ring stretcher. And I have one trick I'd like to share with you for sizing fashion rings. So without further ado, I'm going to go over the ring stretcher, get set up, and I'll be right back. Got my head cut off. I should duck lock this so you can see me easier. It's pretty difficult. Um, this is my um, ring stretcher slash reducer. Um, this is a pretty nice one and it wasn't that expensive. About $300. Um, pretty nice one. I'm really pleased with it. Um, they come in all kinds of prizes, uh, prices. The most expensive one is in the six or seven hundred dollar range um like i said before you, you can should only use these on bands with no stones uh you can get in a lot of trouble with using them on on anything else so uh, i have in the past um and i've been really fortunate over the the years but uh, i've come up with a better way to to stretch rings that um have stones in the top and um it's a little slower but it works see me bending over on the hunchback of the burning bench <laughs> something seriously wrong with this boy so i always keep a mandrel over here uh this right now is ten and a quarter we want to make it uh a Ten and a half. We're going to make it a ten and a half. So when you're using a ring stretcher, it's really important when you're doing it to work it slow. Again, always work things slow. Work slow and you, and, and you turn it, as you stretch it, you turn it half, like quarter turns. Then you turn it over. I'm pretty much right on ten and a half. Whoopsie. You're going to find that you do a lot of searching on the floor, dropping things on the floor. If you don't, you're not doing your job. No, just kidding. I've actually known people that very rarely have to end up on the floor. Unfortunately, I'm not one of those. Oh, look at There I am again, the stripes. I look like an alien creature. Cool. So... So now, we just looked at our job envelope, and it said, it wasn't supposed to be 10 and a half. It was supposed to be 10. Oh no, what do we do? What do we do? We don't call Ghostbusters. We go down, and I'll be right back. I have to readjust the camera. Down here, we have a plate. And let me pull this up a little bit so I can pull the plate out. Not yet, almost. Oh, 
There we go. Okay, this plate looks like this, and it's two-sided, and holes on one side are larger than on the other. Um, and you can see that they're tapered. So that way when you, when you press on one side of the ring with the flat part that's right here, it slides, it forces it down into uh, the tapered hole and compresses the ring. With gold, remember, you have to really anneal it prior to doing this. Otherwise, it's going to really, it, it'll, it'll size, but it's going to really be funky. Uh, whereas if you kneel it first, soften those molecules, relax those molecules in the metal, it's going to end up um, being much easier. So, let's set this in here, back in here, and we want to find uh, a hole where this is just out a little bit. Now it's not quite right. Let's turn it over and see if there's a better one on this side. That one looks really good. Um, this, the ring is just barely up a little bit, and so we're going to run it down here. Now what I like to do is I'll put this in the down in the up position, and I'll adjust this to where it's just above the ring. I don't know if you can see me doing this or not. So, okay, so I've ad I've adjusted. See how this has a screw in it, so. I've adjusted this, so now I'll go down a little bit, being careful not to take it too far. Especially this is silver, it's going to reduce a lot easier than gold. Okay, so now let's look at this. It's, I love it when things go perfect. It's exactly a size 10. Let's turn this around, I don't know if you can read this on the, on the, camera or not but it's exactly a size 10 so let's recap a little bit never I repeat very rarely are I would I I have the policy of never size a ring with the ring stretcher that has stones in it a fashion ring a wedding set especially channels pave set any anything with stones going down the shank Never, ever, ever use the ring sizer. That's my policy. You can experiment, make the mistakes I did. Bands, yellow gold, white gold, platinum, uh, silver, no stones, perfect. That's what the ring stretch is really made for and nothing else. All right, well, I'm going to uh, go back to the workbench, set things back up. And I'm going to show you how to stretch a ring with stones in it. All right. Maybe I'll leave you with some more outtakes or a clip of something. Maybe another fishing clip. That might be cool. All right. See you in a few. Oh, got to change batteries. Don't go down. Don't go down. Okay, you can go down now. Oh, there you go. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> talk, talk about calling it, man. <laughs> this is truly a stunt fish. I was sitting there, changing the battery, and I'm saying, don't go down, go, don't go down, don't go down. Put my battery on, got it on recording, I says, okay, you can go on down now. And <laughs> no sooner had I finished the sentence than my strike indicator takes off. Like it was a vapor trail. <laughs> yeah, I know. Trying to get it underneath you. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what. These fish are certainly scrappy. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa!
Well, I'll tell you what, this thing just took off. Oh, David, this is, this is a nice fish. <laughs> Doesn't want to give up. Oh. <laughs> Every time I get him close, he just decides that, nope, I'm not done yet. Could be a decent one. Maybe one of those butter donkeys, huh? <laughs> I'm tracking him by the strike indicator. Ooh! <laughs> you getting the hit? Oh, you get it, David. Oh. Are you on it? I lost it. <laughs> this little guy. Well, he's not so little, actually. Ugh. Come on, I'm gonna let you go. Ugh. Now this is an official butter donkey. That is a, an official one. You know, he's not really long, but he's really, really thick. Good trout. Here I am, back at the bench. Love the bench. This method is an alternative to actually cutting it and putting a, a piece in. If it's only going up a quarter size, the piece you, you would use for a quarter size is very small, and then you put another sizing place in. Every time it's a sizing place, it weakens the shank. What I will do in those cases is I'll more, more or less push it up in lieu of hitting the back of the shank with a chasing hammer. That dents it. And by the time you f uh, you sand it and smooth it again, you've really thinned that shank. Uh, you can hit it sometimes with a rawhide mallet, and depending upon the ring, you might be able to get it to move. But there again, you don't. You might dent it a little bit. Certainly can't use a hammer on sterling shanks. Uh, sterling's way too soft. So. In over the years, I came up with this method and I used the wedge, a wedge like I would use in my um, um, hand, cl um, um, hand uh, clamp, uh, ring clamp. It's some kind of clamp. I just forgot the name right now, so we're going to move on. Moving on, here we go. So, anyway, it's the wedge that comes with one of these. Um, there's a couple of uh, different styles of those. There's the wooden ones, but there's ones that are produced that are made of plastic. And those have a plastic wedge in it. Uh, it looks just like this. Uh, normally it is, is flat across here, uh, but because I've used it for sizing up so much, uh, it kind of gets a half moon, which is really works to, to your advantage. Um, so I want to move the ring I have here, I want to move it up um, a quarter of a size, and uh, uh, as you can see, it's got stones in it. Um, so I'm going to put it on my mandrel, and I'm going to take take my wedge, and I'm going to go like this, and turn it around. Do the same thing. and you can push it up the mandrel. Uh, it'll stretch from where the wedge is and not the rest of the ring. So it's a really good method only if you're going to small sizes, like a quarter, a third of a size, that's about it. All right, I'm gonna change my tape. I'll be right back. Hey guys, I'm back, just in time to say, I guess that's it for another episode of the ta-da, ta-da, ta-da burning bench if you have any questions or comments you can email me at logan1studio at aol.com till the next time work safe thanks for tuning in